Finally, we have reached the halfway mark of the Acolyte with episode 4, and thankfully, she's a short one. Approximately 27 minutes, and yet, it still feels like it gets bogged down in boring discussions and walking. One of the main character's entire motivations, and therefore purpose for existing in the show, does a complete 180. How this will affect the rest of the show, I have no idea. We still have four episodes left with one Jedi to kill, and even that seems to be off the table, so what now? We're really tossing aside the main thrust of the entire series midstream. This is a pretty bad episode, we learn basically nothing, and what interesting things were future possibilities for the show to explore are dropping like flies. Again, prior canon events are treated like flexible suggestions rather than facts. It gets boring if you just make up the rules as you go along. It's like playing a made-up sport with a five-year-old. Oh, where I kick the ball is actually worth 100 points. Episode 4 of The Acolyte gets a 3 out of 10 for me. It feels like we're throwing everything out and starting again with too little time for there to be anything like a satisfying conclusion. I'm worried there'll be a massive twist that will not make any sense if you rewatch the earlier episodes. The episode starts with the little slice of life of Kalnaka on Kofar in his jungle hideaway. He's gathering vegetables and making a delicious bowl of native grasses. Kalnaka, after having witnessed but a sample of the witch's coven, has dedicated his life to understanding the symbols for some reason. Back on Coruscant, and Jeki is being trained by the Sphinx for Mystery Men. Learn to hide your strikes from your opponent and you will more easily strike his hide. Maximize your defenses without need to strike. What does that even mean? Is that a fully constructed sentence? Even autocorrect is chiming in. So 16 year old Padawans get sticks, but 4 year old Padawans in the prequels get mini lightsabers. Jackie approached Osha from the wrong angle. It's simple things like this that show the lack of care. So now we're supposed to believe that these two have some sort of relationship? They barely know each other. How did Jackie do anything more than Sol or Yord to help Osha realise May was alive? Jackie was in the spaceship overhead when they confronted each other. Jackie's acting with sentimentality when she was the one who admonished Master Soul for his having holograms of his former students. Oof, May's ship looks janky as anything. It almost looks like a cardboard cutout. At least have some steam being vented from the landing gear or some heat haze. Why'd they take their containers outside the ship to pack their backpacks? And why aren't they working together? I'll carry the food if you carry the tent. Good to see they make Kumir extra clumsy to throw us off the scent of him being the Sith Lord. So they only have three hours of sunlight left. Why not stay in the ship until morning? And why not put your excess containers back in the ship? It can't be too remote, there's a bridge here. Everyone else beside Kiati Mundi has their names before their subtitles in this scene. Now I don't care that he's not even born at this point, I just shake my head and wonder why they didn't just say he was another one of these coneheads and simply be done with it. Involving a character from another entry in the series just opens you up to complaints. They keep calling May's master he. Whenever shows do this they always like to make a point of, it's really a girl all along. But who could it be? If not Ezra Miller, the only other viable options are one of the witches or Trinity. We've seen how blows to the torso in Star Wars have historically been merely a minor inconvenience. Venestra is very suspicious with the way she doesn't want to inform the Jedi Council. What is she hiding? Master Holden asks Venestra what she could do if May doesn't come peacefully. Venestra says she's not expecting it to come to that. You know, stopping her on a mission to kill a Wookiee Jedi after she already killed two Jedi Masters. And I'm assuming Indara wasn't her first kill. Clearly she's killed before. What an odd thing to say. How come this door opened without the requirement for a Force hand signal? Kormir seems to know what buttons to press with May, Nagging her about killing without a weapon. Telling her that Osha seems to like Sol. I'm not sure if Kumir and May have a relationship outside of this mission. Did they train together? Were they part of the same group of assassins? Oh snap, it's Plo Koon! Or is it just one of his race? 
What the hell is this rat boy? And Pip just spunks in its face. Why is Osha using he they when she could easily use it? So Basil's just a glorified bloodhound. Nice scenery. Looks like they actually ventured outside. Finally, an actual scene with some humanity. Yord and Osha have a heart to heart where Osha tells Yord that she probably won't be able to bring May in alone, so he'll probably have to do it for her. But Yord has faith in Master Soul's reasoning and believes that Osha trying is part of her progression. Nice one, show. More of this, please. Osha's clearly never seen a horror movie before. You never touched the weird organism thing growing on the walls. The Umbra Moth attacks and flies straight at Soul's lightsaber. That won't come back into play later when it's dark and nine Jedi's ignite their sabers. I don't know why they're walking through a forest that they know contains their enemy and still have their lightsabers hooked to their belts. They don't have to ignite them, just have them at hand. So May traps Kamir and tells him that she's going to hand herself into Kel Naka because she now has a family. Is this turning into Fast and Furious? Basil's gone missing. Are we ever going to mention him again? So once Sol gets both May and Osha to the ship, he'll explain everything. I'll bet that's something that does not happen for three episodes. Somehow, Basil got out in front of May. Because she runs into him and a cloud of mushroom spores. Is she now poisoned? May makes it to Kalnaka's ship, but he's already dead. Sliced with the lightsaber across the chest. So the master cannot be Kamir because he was tied up by the ankle and May ran basically straight here to find Kalnaka dead. Meanwhile, Sol and the gang turn up outside and demand that May surrender. But while this is happening, Darth Maul floats in behind Osha and approaches her. All of the Jedi ignite their sabers and Darth Maul tosses Osha aside. As the Jedi approach, Darth Maul uses Force Push and that's the end of the episode. The last shot of Darth Maul shows that the right arm holding the saber is particularly jacked. I mean, Kamir is the only person who knows May has abandoned her mission to kill Kalnaka. And why does her master want her to kill the four Jedi who ruined her ascension? Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.